All right, ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to show you how to fix your uh, extraordinarily cheap 15 or $10, maybe 20 now, Harbor Freight Grinder. Um, they're all pretty similar, whether your model is newer or older. Uh, what happens with these is I've, I have currently have five or six of them. Um, why so many? Because I, I weld and fabricate a lot and I'll, I'll run like a cutting wheel in one or I'll run a wire brush in one or a grinding wheel or a flap disc in one. You know, it's just easy just to grab a different one and, um, you know, instead of swapping out the wheel every time. But anyway, what happens is after you see how I got the zip tie on this, this is you know, after about a year or two of hard use or maybe even longer, maybe even less. Um, the contacts are basically where this cord goes in and connects to the contacts in there that starts breaking this cheap PVC insulation uh, in the copper it literally splits in half or disconnects on the inside a lot of times I've had probably uh, four of them fail this way and uh, surprisingly it's 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 real easy to take them apart and fix them also uh, this one has a new failure mode. This split here, and uh, now I have to wiggle it around to get it to run again. So it's time for a replacement cord, which I have here. Uh, this is just a used one. I save power cords off all sorts of stuff for such an occasion. I'm just going to check this and make sure it works. If you're doing the same thing, so if this is your first time fixing your grinder, your cheap grinder, you can actually use your cord, um, unless it's, you know, it's failed like this, but if you can wiggle around and you can get a few more miles out of it without even taking this apart by putting a zip tie around it like I have here, if you can wiggle it in the right place where it just kicks on, what I'll do is I'll, I'll put the switch on and then I'll wiggle the wire until it kicks on, um, yeah, and then put a zip tie like that. This has worked for months like that. And, uh, yeah, so it's, it's finally time to fix it, but yeah, we're going to test. I got to be careful with that blade. I'm going to test this new cord just to make sure it's good. I'm going to put my meter on the continuity setting. Continuity setting is basically the one where you touch the leads together and it beeps. And that just lets you know that you have a clear path for the electrons to flow. Test this real quick. Yeah, we got a good path through the neutral. This is a three-prong plug, too. That's totally unnecessary. These grinders don't use a three-prong. They're not grounded. We got a path through the hot. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, basically, these are just held together by that one screw there. And if you pull this screw off, they make them really easy to repair. And if I remember correctly, this came with extra brushes too. So believe it or not, if you actually wear out your brushes over time, which I never have, you and you still have those replacement ones that it comes with, you can keep her going. It's a real good deal for 15 bucks. These are really, really tough grinders actually. I'm very impressed with them. Um, I have just punished the shit out of these. But anyway, what you want to do with your grinder, especially if it's the first time it's breaking, so this power cord goes up, and see these see these wires here? They go up through here, and then they connect to these terminals here. And it doesn't matter if you wire it reverse polarity or not, this thing will work and, and go the same direction. So it doesn't matter if you mix up your wires, you know, say if you take it apart or anything like that. Um, but the connectors... Basically, they break to where it's not making contact anymore. Typically, I've already been inside this one and fixed it here. Um, and there's little uh, wire connectors that, that go through through hole connectors. That's what I should. I think that's what they're called. And those break, so you can eliminate those through hole connectors and just straight splice or open up your um, copper wire. And then wrap it around the screw like that, like I did. I don't know if you can see it. I'll show you a little better here. 
and it should work again. So I'm going to pull those out. Fish them out the other side. If I can. Oh, it's going to make me take that screw all the way out. Darn it. Really didn't want to do that. Maybe. Oh, there it goes. See? That's all I did. I just stripped the end of the wire and I wrapped it around those screws. And you can probably do that and get away with it just fine. And the grinder will work good for a long time. Um, but if you're reusing your same power cord, it's probably going to fail in another way. Because these power cords are extremely, extremely cheap. You know, so it, it might be a good idea for you to snip another one off uh, something else that broke down that maybe has a little more of a robust power cord. At least they're real copper, though. I mean, that's surprising for a 10 or $15 grinder. I don't know if they can get away with it not being real copper. Like, if you buy jumper cables now, they're, they're um, not real copper anymore. They're just electroplated aluminum wire. They look like copper wire. But, yeah, they just have a copper coating over aluminum, and they're terrible. So I'm just going to get rid of this one here. And then here's my new cord. I'm just going to ultimately, I'm going to snap that ground prong off this. And I'm just going to snip this ground here. i got to strip this a little more. This is really hard. PVC insulation. I wish I had some SJ, that's what they call it. Um, it's power cord and it's got like a rubber insulation on it. Makes it a lot easier to work with. Might be siliconized rubber, I'm not sure. But this this is cheap, cheap power cord right here. Even this replaceable replacement one I have. And it's got really stiff, hard uh, PVC insulation on it. Or the outer the outer jacket on it okay so I'm fish my wire up through here oh, let me cut off that ground first who needs a ground ah, I don't think there is a way I could ground this even if I wanted to the uh, the whole case on it is plastic maybe a, maybe I could grind to this ground to this uh, metal head up here I don't know that cast aluminum head if I really wanted to if it bugs me but it doesn't I get shocked a lot. I'm used to it. Okay. Let me fish my wire through. And like I said, if if you get these backwards, it does not matter. Reverse polarity doesn't matter in AC. Some old school AC appliances or motors or stuff like that, they might spin backwards. But with this guy, it's a universal motor. It doesn't care. Anyway, I believe these are universal motors in here. AC brush motor. I think this can run on AC or DC. But I'm not sure. If somebody knows for sure, clarify in the comments so the rest of us know. That would be cool. Alright, the tricky part is going to be fishing these down in there. I don't want to take that screw all the way out. If I take that screw all the way out, I think something bad's going to happen. It's going to be a pain in the butt. I don't know. Let me try it. Yeah, there's a little nut behind that screw. And it's got to be lined up perfect. I really should just use little through-hole connectors. I have some. I'm working hard instead of smart here. I was grinding on my truck over there, and I... I went to go turn this on and it just wasn't. I'm like, ugh. Oh. All right. And I figured I might as well make a video about it. I twisted that the wrong way around the thing. Anyway, don't be like me. Use uh, through hole connectors on this. It's a lot neater. It's a lot cleaner. It's a lot more dependable. Less chance of you arcing or shorting um, the two. Live wires going in and out. Let me turn this on. Is that forward? Oh, I got lucky. See that? I just pinched that right in there. So our hot is connected. 
Now let's do a neutral. it to the right here. Little screws. This one I have a feeling it's probably going to fight me. If I put the right connectors on the end of that too, I probably would have been done by now. Maybe. Yeah. Pretty tight connection. I'm yanking on the wire. Um, you're going to want to reconnect this thing here that holds your power cord. Just like that. That's pretty important so you're not jerking. Oh. I just bumped the table. Sorry. Shaking you. So you're not jerking your uh, your connections apart. There we go. I'm tighten this other screw. Easy peasy. Knock on wood. I hope I didn't lose my other screw. I don't know where it is. The screw that attaches this. That just slides right back together. Like that. Boom. Oh, make sure to put this over your new cord first. If you forget to put this over your new cord, you're going to have to pull it all apart again. Or disconnect your wires and then, you know, obviously. Unless you cut a big hole in the bottom, then you might be able to squeeze your plug through there. I would do something like that. And this, oh, by the way, while we're in here, this is where your brushes are. And... To take your brushes out, you undo that screw there, and I think this whole assembly comes out, and it's connected by a wire, and your brush is spring-loaded in there, and it should shoot out when you take this screw out and pull this guy out, and then you push your other your new brushes back in, kind of hold them in there with a pick, and place it down into place and screw it in. It's a pain in the butt, but it's really not too bad, especially if you're patient. If you've done it before, you know what I'm talking about, but everything is accessible through this plastic case here. It's only one screw. Um, up here is its final drive, I think you'd call that. And uh, this is actually pretty robust. This is all cast aluminum. This is a hell of a deal for 10 or 15 bucks. You can get these on sale at Harbor Freight for 10, 15 bucks. Probably 20 now. I don't know if they've upgraded them, but. And you can keep these things going forever. Now, for 10 or 15 bucks, you say, why didn't you just go buy a new one? I would have just bought a new one. Well, I'm far away from Harbor Freight. It's going to take me an hour round trip, probably an hour and a half round trip to drive there and back. And, uh, you know, this is going to take me just a few minutes. So it's more economical at this point just to keep it going. Plus, I'm attached to all my angle grinders. So let's give this a try. Watch it not work because I'm recording this. I'm going to snap off this ground prong here because we're not using it. These are the wrong pliers to do it with, really. Yeah. Oh, it worked. Okay. Just snap that off clean. Let me find a pluggeroo. Make sure your switch is not in the on position when you plug this in. I've done that before. They go all, all over the place. They take right off like a hot rod. Not too bad, okay? That's about it. Um, if it still doesn't work, your switch might have went. 
your brushes might be wore out. Check your power source, obviously. Make sure that's good. Um, yeah, you can test your switch. There's a lot of videos on testing switches. That's real basic. Uh, if it gets that involved, I'd probably go get another one if I were you. Okay? All right, good luck. Thanks for tuning in.